Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel again. Keith here from Commander Hoop Celtic. If this is your first time coming across the channel, please hit that subscribe button below. It helps the channel grow. A thumbs up or a comment below would be fantastic. It means a lot to me when I see a new subscriber coming through, you know. Look, let's talk about players that are linked to the club. I love doing transfer activity, transfer talk. I know a lot of people get agitated, like, you know, this is this and this is that. But it is what it is. So let's kick it off. Jota, still in Portugal. Went to a music concert last night. He went to Rio de Lisbona. He was pictured with one of the bragging midfielders. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's any move in this deal in the last couple of days. I know there was a tabloid and a sports page in Portugal called Ebola. They reported that Celtic Benfica came to a deal up to nearly 7 million euros with add-ons on top of it that he was coming to Celtic. There's been nothing since. He's still over there. Join his time in Portugal, he's done basically his world tour, he's done Cancun, he's done so-called Cyprus, he's done Ibiza, New York, I don't know where he's been, and to be honest with you, I just want him in Glasgow, that's his final destination, like every Celtic fan wants him in Glasgow, with the long sleeve hoops on next season, banging goals in, we all want to be seeing Jota on the wing, but... At this moment of time, this day looks like it's it's slow one. I did say a couple of times on the channel that this could go down to the final day. I know it's early days in this window and I might be getting ahead of myself, but Ange did come out and say today that, you know, if we're going to get the business done early in the windows, that's our that's our priority to get them settled in, get a good pre-season in, get the run of games in, get the fitness in and concentrate on the task that's in hand to be stronger and better from last season. And Jota is one of them players that we need on the books. You know, we have Champions League football coming up. We have massive games against Rangers in the league to win a title, to win it potentially a treble. And this is this is the ambitions I have next season as a Celtic fan like yourself. Ambitions to do a treble. You know, we won two out of three. Why not? Why not? We have a stronger squad this season. We're obviously, we're obviously losing out on Beaton and Rodic. And Rodic is on the verge of making the decision if he's going to join an Indonesian team. And whatever he does, I wish him the very best. Tommy had some phenomenal years at Celtic. You know, he's always going to go down as a Celtic legend. But the next one we're going to talk about is Ko Itakura. Now, I've talked about this guy many times on the channel. A Japanese international played centre-back. Last season, he was at Schalke. Helped him get promoted to the Bundesliga. And he was on the verge of signing for Borussia Mönchengladbach. And the deal has broken down. So is there a chance that Celtic could come in last minute, last hour? Get him. There's reports that Schalke weren't willing to pay the five million for him, and Borussia Mönchengladbach pay were paying up to five point three million for him. But it was the wages that was the stumbling block there. So, would you like to see Cole Iacure sign for Celtic? I think with the Japanese contingent that we have at the club, it would be ideal. Yeah, he has a bit of English because he's obviously been in the Man City books and stuff like that. So let's talk about that. Regards to a Man City link. Vicente Souza. Now, this is a guy that's been chased by five different clubs. And to be brutally honest with you, looking at the media reports, Venabache put a bid in two days ago from 4.6 million and is rejected. And this is a lad that's playing second division in Belgium. Yes, he played first division last season for KV Mechelen, but they're overpricing him. And they're putting on a price tag up to 10 million euros. Hold on a second. Yes, he's the, yeah, he's Brazilian. Yeah, he's a good defensive midfielder. We have Ajax, we have Club Bruges, we have PSV, we have Bologna, we have Venabache, and we have Celtic chasing him. If he wants to come to Celtic, and he's ambitious about his career, picking over Bologna, PSV, no disrespect to PSV, Venabache, no disrespect to them, but Celtic are bigger club than the majority of these clubs. You know, um, question about Ajax, now it's a different story, but... I just think we need to move on from this guy, Vicente Souza. I think it's, you know, the ship has sailed with this. I don't think we should be dragged into this bidding more for this lad. There's better quality out there. And I think Ange is well capable and his scouts are well capable of looking into the market and getting a better defensive midfielder because the prices for this lad is outrageous. What is he? Like, is he the next Claude Mekalele? Because the way that they're boasting about him is a bit too much yeah i know i've i came out and said on the channel that he could be potentially the next matic but look no let's move on from this guy definitely move on jordan larson a lad that i feel very uncomfortable talking about on this channel because 
you bring Larson into the club. Fabrizio Romero has came out and said on one of his tweets today that Jordan Larson is a free agent. He spent his last four months at AIK because of the Ukrainian Russian war, and Spartak Moscow has terminated his contract. So where is Jordan Larson going? Is he going back to Sweden? Is he going to take a stint to Holland? Or will Celtic take him on the free? He came out and said in 2020, his dream move is to Celtic. We all know what Jordan Larson, who Jordan Larson is related to. His dad was the great Henrik Larson. He's 25 years of age. He's a Swedish international. He can play on the left. He can play on the right. And mostly up front. Would you take Jordan Larson at Celtic on a free? Be brutally honest. I, I personally... I would like to say it, but I wouldn't like to say it because I think he'll always be compared to his dad. You know, he'll always be compared to, oh, your dad done a better, you done this and that. And, you know, obviously, I don't think it's a good move. I really don't think it's a good move because some Celtic fans get things under their skin too quick. And when a player has a bad performance, it sticks out for them forever. Forever. And I think with Ange, what he's adapted with this side players are going to have bad performances and that's the way it is in football when no one's perfect and look what happened with Starfelt he started off with a few bad performances and I doubt him like majority fans doubt him and then by October I start getting on his side and still people are like why would you call him Starfelt in the comments mate you support Celtic we won the fucking league last season and league cup and people are still giving him this cup on to yourself seriously yeah he's not like world class uh as Carter Vickers in, in my eyes or your eyes but we're getting clean sheets and you need to move on from this whole mockery of calling them fucking arse felt like that's 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 very premature from some fans I know there's banter but like some people are literally pissed off with the whole Starfelt situation I think it's a bit over the top but let me know what you think about Jordan Larson big time Um, Alessandro Bernardi I know he pronounced his name completely different to the way some people are pronouncing it his medical was done today. We're just waiting for the the um the travel the visa to be all approved, and then it should be confirmed within the next couple of days. I thought it would have been confirmed by now, but it's just not happening. It's just taking forever. Obviously, moving to the UK is gonna be a bit longer with the visa application and stuff like that. So he done his medical today at Lennox Town, and we're looking to forward to seeing more action on the left wing as well and the left back situation because there's not enough caliber. We have, I know we have Taylor in there, but Montgomery and Ballangoli are not good enough to put it, but to put them in the Champions League night. So let's see what happens. Do subscribe to the channel. I'll speak to you all soon. Hell, hell, up the Celts.